that's part of the four that are down in Kona right now. I believe Derek's has two crews they usually run. For them to do all three at the same time would be difficult. Um, how many customers would you say were impacted because of these wells being down? Uh, not any as far as um, loss of service because of the wells being down. We've had people go without service because of other things like water main breaks or uh, PRVs or inlet control valves possibly not functioning properly, but specifically due to the four wells in Kona being down, um, we haven't lost service to our customers. And then we've also had to also outreach to other wells though to pump in so we wouldn't lose that service, right? Yep. Our so how are we then gonna help relieve some of those other areas that got impacted for us extracting? He, yeah, so basically our guys have been working some kind of magic in Kona to keep water flowing to everybody. Um, so in the past, we we're more heavily reliant on those basal sources. Um, so out of the 13, we have uh, seven high level, six basal. So we're putting more dependence back on those basal sources, notably the Kahalu shaft, the Kahalu well fields, even Holualoa well, I believe. Um, so in the past, what we used to do is, is boost up Palani Road. Whereas when we had the new high level sources, we, we changed the flow from Makai to Malka to Malka to Makai. So we had to do more of that original Makai to Malka type um, distribution. Um, so when these wells come back online, we'll return to what our normal has been and rely more on those high level versus the basal and re reduce our pumping on the shaft and the basal sources again. So what's happening here, especially in this area where we've got three submersible pumps and motors all going down in simultaneously? What I've instructed staff to do is our next well that we're going to construct, a brand new one, what we're going to do is we're going to invest a little bit more. We're going to drill two smaller holes on the same site instead of putting these big 1,000 GPM, 1,400 GPM pumps. Um, we're hoping that these smaller capacity wells will be um, less problematic for us. Um, and also, if one goes down, we still at least get half capacity with another one. So we're going to invest a little bit more upfront on capital. We're going to drill two smaller ones on one site and uh, hopefully be better off because of that in the long run. We're going to probably stop doing these big, high capacity, high elevation type um, pump and motors because they're not making them like they used to apparently, because they used to last a whole lot longer than they are now. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, yeah, we've thought about that and we, we're deciding to make some changes, but it's gonna cost us a little bit more up front. Priority would be most likely the Palani deep well, just because it's the most straightforward and the highest GPM. Yes. Next would be Hualalai, which is the next highest GPM, and the next would be uh, Keopu. Okay. So how this thing works too is um, there's a lot of uh, manufacturing time in these pumps and motors. So the actual work that Derek will be doing is going to be a lot of it uh, during this manufacturing process. They'll extract the, the damaged well. Right, so they can do that in sequence with the three projects. The big question going to come on the installation part. We'll see when it comes close to that point in time if we'll have a challenge or not. But um, 